Hi, Father Marshall Shelley coming to you actually from my home. I am uh, giving you a little update on the life, the ministry, and the mission of St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Spotswood, but uh, have been working from home today. Reason for that brings me to the word of the week. The word of the week, an unusual one, is pain. I uh, was doing a funeral yesterday and uh, had a mishap and uh, fell and uh, struck my ribs against a hard object, uh, as well as doing a bit of wrenching of the body. People in their mid-50s tend to have these lasting effects. And so right now I am working from home and doing my best to rest after having sustained an injury. I'm going to be okay. This is, this is not uh, intended to be one of those high drama vlog posts, but I want to talk a little bit about pain. Reason for that is as I was trying to get comfortable last night and find a place to rest, um, I really did feel the the impact of that uh, that moment on my ribs, and uh, every time I moved, I was uh, engaging my core uh, as I tried to turn over in bed, and felt it every single moment. So uh, had a bit of a relatively light sleep night as I tried to do my best to get some rest, and I've been very careful today. Oftentimes, we experience pain as something that is. Um, a, a momentary impression upon us. You know, we scrape uh, our finger on something, get a cut in the kitchen, or we have a cat that has very sharp claws. She can uh, crease us pretty easily without intending it. Sometimes she does intend it. And we have that moment of, of sting or of pain. But then there are other kinds of pain that sit more deeply within us. And the one I'm fighting now, which is when they affect our core, when they affect our being. They change the way we breathe, they change the way we move, they change the way we engage with people we love, they, in, they impact our routines. Sometimes they can be signifiers for us, those elements of pain. Um, they can be indicators that there's something deeper and more problematic going on in our bodies. Pain can be an indicator of deeper illness. Oftentimes we don't know that we're sick until we have some manifestation of pain. Things like cancer or, uh, or other injuries uh, manifest in that way and we get to know ourselves that way. We also deal with chronic pain, pain in our bodies that is continual and sustained. I have parishioners, I have had family members who have dealt with chronic pain over the years, and one of the things that you start to see are, is the level of scarring and impact it has on a human soul, and also on the human lives of the people around them that are doing their best to help them. It has an impact on us. It affects us mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, and even if pain is felt in any one of those areas, it can easily spill over and connect to those other places. You know, one of the things that, uh, that uh, I've heard said of pain like I have right now, which is it only hurts when I laugh, and that's true. So it even can affect our moods. And uh, you know, even when we're starting to feel better inside ourselves and want to offer up a chuckle with this kind of pain that I'm experiencing now, that chuckle can open up more pain instead of mitigating it. So be mindful of those things in your life that uh, are causing you to experience pain. Try to understand it and embrace it. It isn't easy sometimes because pain isn't a rational thing and it doesn't ask for a rational response. It is trying to prevent us from damaging us ourselves further. And pain when it's felt in community is much the same, only it's felt on a larger scale. And we're feeling a lot of that lately. Even in the wake of the pandemic, as things have calmed down, we're feeling less stressed about one thing, other things have risen to stress us out and cause pain and grief. We know that there's a lot of pain going on in Ukraine right now, but there are other places where war persists, where injuries persist of human beings inflicting upon each other. We have to do our best to care for each other in that. So be mindful of pain, particularly in this Lenten tide. How can we offer comfort to others? My wife has been a great comfort to me. She's done everything she can to make sure that this day is one where I'm taking care of myself and making sure that I take the medicine I need and get the rest I need and do the things I need to do in order to recover swiftly, as is my staff, as is the leadership of the parish. So what do you need to be able to deal effectively with your pain? And how can you do that, not only for your own benefit, but also for the benefit of the people you care for and love? And of course, as you try to help people deal with their pain, be careful and mindful and be cautious. Really hear what they're experiencing. Too often in our lives, we tend to downplay the pain that others feel maybe because it makes us feel uncomfortable, maybe because we don't connect to it, maybe we can't find the sympathy or the empathy in the moment we need in order to deal with being able to support them more fully. So be mindful and be aware and listen uh, 
uh, when someone is expressing some pain. Maybe they're giving you a hint of something deeper that's going on in their lives. There is a lot going on in the life and ministry of St. Peter's right now. I urge you to check out our website as well as to check out the e-news that's coming to you soon. Make sure that you stay connected to all the things that are happening. We're continuing to maintain a regular regimen of prayer. Becoming an Episcopalian and more is going to uh, resume its service. Uh, it's a gathering on Tuesday night next week. We have this coming weekend as well, the women's breakfast, which was postponed because of weather, but we'll gather at 9 a.m. in our fellowship space in the parish hall. We'll also have our shop open as well as uh, doing everything we can to prepare for worship on Sunday, at which you are most welcome, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. We'll, of course, broadcast the service live at 8 a.m. and welcome you at 10 a.m. We have diocesan things going on. They're about to uh, have the listening session. We're looking forward to welcoming the canon, the Reverend Canon Dr. Rob Drosty. He's going to be with us uh, at church on uh, the 20th on, on Sunday, as well as to be with us afterwards. We're going to give him some support as he prepares for his uh, Getting to Know You tour with the Diocese of Utah. And so we're going to offer him up some of the questions he may have to answer as he responds to the wider group of the diocese uh, community. So please be with us and join us throughout the week. You can always find us here on YouTube. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can find us live on Facebook when we're offering the daily office and, of course, when we are gathering on Sunday mornings. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.